Hey, what's going on there guys? You've officially arrived at the 420 scene and today we're gonna to talk about how to fix slow growth on your plants. But first, show some love and support by watching the entire video, dropping a like, subscribing, and tapping the post notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. And also, check out our sponsors, Robert Bergman's ILGM and Mars Hydro for all your horticultural needs. Also, be sure to join our VIP Patreon for tips, monthly giveaways, live streams, all that good stuff. A link will be in the description below. When your plants grow slowly or stop growing altogether, there is always going to be a reason. They just don't like stop growing. There's always going to be a reason. I mean, it could be a problem with nutrients. It could be an environmental factor or something else entirely. So let's talk about that a little bit. There are many reasons, a million reasons why your plant's growth is less than perfect or just straight up trash. When your plants stop going bullish, they're not over VWAP. Okay, I'll stop talking stocks. Anyway, let's start with seeds that are either old or crappy quality. Old seeds don't just take longer to germinate if they even germinate. Plants grown from aged seeds can also sometimes grow at a reduced pace. Likewise, good genetics are essential for healthy and vigorous growth from seed to harvest. Gotta have good genetics to have good plant growth, you know? A random bag seed is just not gonna perform nearly as well as quality seeds obtained from a reputable seed bank like ILGM or Nirvana Shop, for instance. Those are those are like my two go-tos, you know what I'm saying? Root health. Now, this is a biggie, kinda like the Skittles. Yeah. When your plant's roots can't receive enough oxygen, health functions start to slow down. And in some cases, a lack of oxygen may just stop the growth altogether. Like, that could be a thing. There's not enough oxygen, you're done. One common reason for this is overwatering or using substrates with poor drainage, like the strawberry fields. So what do you do about it? Create a light and airy growing medium with good drainage. You can improve poor draining soil by adding some perlite, not perlite. <laughs> I know someone was trying to troll me saying that I say perlite. Perlite, okay, got it? Okay, good. The root zone of your plants should never get much hotter or colder from room temperature. Now, likewise, physical damage to the roots, mold or bacteria can severely affect the growth of your plants. Always use non-transparent planters so light doesn't reach the roots. This is also a bad thing. So you don't want like clear pots because lights are gonna constantly be hitting the roots. You don't want that. So keep it like black or, you know, whatever. Now, plant stretching too much. This is a problem. Stretching a among seedlings is more common than, you know, when they're already kind of in the veg stage. And this could be particularly problematic off the get-go. Multiple factors can induce this response, but the most likely culprit is gonna be a lack of light. So if your seedlings are tall and lanky, increase the light intensity or just bring the lights closer to the plant, you know? I like to kind of experiment with that. You know, if they start getting a little tall and lanky, bring the light down. If they're not responding too well, bring the light up a little bit, you know, just so you can find that sweet spot. Now, plants are not getting enough light. That's also another thing. All the requirements can vary from strain to strain. Light is nonetheless a critical factor for the development of all your plants. A lack of having a good light can absolutely lead to slow growth. And if you're growing indoors and suspect that your plants aren't getting enough light, try to decrease the distance between your lamps and the top of your plants, like I mentioned earlier. If you grow outside in the pots, move your plants into a sunnier spot. Now the complete opposite, giving too much light. Now that's a problem as well. And any type of stress on your plants, including many hours of exposure to direct sunlight without any kind of rest can also halt or slow down your growth. This is why I know a lot of people that grow autoflowers like to keep them on 24 hours. Where's the rest period, right? Gotta have that rest period. Do not keep it on 24 hours. I don't like to, some people are gonna argue with me, but it is what it is. Now, if you grow indoors and suspect light exposure to be the source of stress, just decrease the light intensity or move the lamps further away from the canopy as possible. Kind of like what I said with the ceilings, if they're stretching, you're pretty much doing the opposite of that. Next is when your light cycle is interrupted. This is more of an issue for photo period plants. Light is essential for all plants to grow and any changes in light intensity or exposure will have an effect on growth. Flowering plants are especially susceptible to interruptions in the dark cycle. Now a light leak in your tent, you know, like a stray light from a street lamp or something, something that's just hitting your lights that you're not really expecting like it's gonna make a difference, trust me, it's going to make a difference. Even the red light from a camera, that can that can literally be enough to disrupt flowering. And in the worst case scenario, your plants are gonna turn hermy and that's just, that's just bad news all around, you know what I'm saying? So for that reason, it is very important to maintain complete darkness during the lights off hours. Exposing your plants to irregular light hours can cause a hormone imbalance that confuses their internal clock and it's gonna screw them up. They're gonna have no idea whether they should be in veg or flower. 
Now your plants could flower prematurely or they could revert back to the veg stage like I just said. If this happens, growth and yields will greatly suffer and for that reason, make sure to keep your light cycle consistent. Overwatering is the next one and this is like huge. I mention this in like literally every single video and it's the most common mistake made by newer growers. Why do you ask? Because people love to micromanage, especially when you start out. You know, you want everything so perfect and perfect and then you start, you see an issue and then you start overwatering, overwatering and guess what? You're done, you know, it's a problem, all right? So it's literally like suffocating your plants and one of the main reasons behind the slow growth, nutrient deficiencies, root rot, fungus and many other problems. So guys, don't water too often and during veg, do not water on a fixed schedule. If you wanna do a fixed schedule, flowering is, is the time to do it since, you know, they drink a lot more during the flowering cycle than the veg cycle. It is better to water less frequently so that the soil can dry in between waterings. A good way to test whether you should water or not is to lift up the pot itself. If it feels quite light, it is time to water again. And another thing is, let your leaves do the talking, you know what I'm saying? Let them tell you whether they need water or not. If your leaves are perked up, but your pot is dry, leave it alone. I know it sounds like an anomaly what I just said, but when the pot is light, Okay, that's a good thing, right? When your pot is light, okay, maybe they need water, but now what about the leaves? If the leaves are still perked up, maybe give it an extra day or two is all I'm saying. Next is not giving your plants enough nutrients. Not as common as overfeeding your plants. It's pretty much an insufficient amount of nutrients for healthy growth can well be the reason for slow growth. Knowing that the nutrients found in most commercial potting mixes will only last about three to four weeks, supposedly, and afterwards you're gonna have to administer some quality nutrients of your own. I I always tell people like I use a lot of the fox farm stuff like the ocean forest and strawberry fields like the ocean forest you know during veg you pretty much don't need any other nutrients I think it'll carry you onto flower but once you get into the flowering stage you're gonna need something you know you're gonna have to get that phosphorus and potassium intake going now as far as the nutrients and the, the nutrient schedule check the label on your nutrient products for the recommended dosage for healthy growth and I always like telling people to start off with half of what's recommended and go from there you know to give your plants too much. Also know that your plants and nutrient requirements are closely linked to the light intensity that your plants are exposed to. Plants under intensive light grow faster and will require more nutrients than plants under, we'll just say CFLs for an example. Now let's talk about calcium deficiency. I feel like calcium deficiency is really underrated. Calcium is among those super vital elements that your plants need for healthy development. Not enough calcium will give you curled or twisted plant growth and slow plant growth. There are two ways I know know how to give your plants calcium. The first one is, you know, it's a no-brainer. You just use CalMag. And the other one is adding some dolomite lime to your mix. Um, if you don't know what it is, look that up. It looks like a, like a white powder. You pretty much top dress on your plants. I know a lot of outdoor growers use dolomite lime. But anyway, I prefer Botanic Hairs CalMag. That's the brand that I've always used. So to me, that's pretty much a safe bet. Another reason for slow plant growth is having the wrong pH levels. Everybody is going to hit me with this and I don't really care. I like keeping my water water pH levels at around 6.0 to 6.4, but I like to keep it as close to 6.0 as possible. And if you got high pH, like high water pH, I know my water pH is like 7.5 to 8.0. You can always use lemon juice if you want something more organic, or you can use the pH up and pH down stuff that literally every hydroponic shop in the world has. Next, the temps are either too high or too low. Now during the daytime, I like my plants in the 70s. Low to upper 70s is pretty good. Even 80 degrees is okay, but I mean, that could be pushing it a little bit. Now during the flowering stage, I do like my temperatures to be a little cool around 66 to 70 degrees. That's me personally. I know a lot of people are gonna have different answers. Don't hit me with it. I'm just telling you what I prefer, all right? Next is pests and disease. And I think this one is by far the easiest one to control. I know some people are gonna disagree with me. Insects, pests, and disease can cause damage and compromise a plant's immune system. Now in a best case scenario, your plants may survive, but you're gonna have poor yields. You know what I mean? I mean, they'll survive, but your, your yields are gonna suck, so it's almost like, what's the point, right? Now, in the worst case, your plants could just simply just wilt and die. Insects may feed on your leaves, affecting the plant's ability to retain water and transpire. Now, other pests may damage the roots or cause additional problems. Now, anytime your plant is sick or infested with insects, it will spend most of its energy defending itself and recovering from damage, which will slow growth because they're, they're trying to defend themselves. They don't care about the growth at this point. They're trying to stay alive, all right? I found that to get rid of bug problems, a combination of good airflow, some cinnamon top dress, and add some microbe lift, and your plants should be good to go. I'm telling you one thing, guys, insects absolutely cannot
not stand cinnamon. So, I mean, everybody's got cinnamon in their house, right? I think fighting off pests and diseases, especially like having bug problems, is like the easiest thing. And airflow, whenever I have good airflow on my plants, you're never gonna see any bugs around. They hate that, they hate airflow. They like that stagnant air, that's, that's where they thrive. All right guys, so before I close out today's video, I wanna thank everyone on screen for supporting us on Patreon. If you want your name in here, just simply join us, you know what I mean? <coughs> I'm dying. So I'm gonna close off today's video. Be sure to drop a fat thumbs up, drop that fat like, and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And I hope everybody has a great rest of their day. And as always, stay safe. Peace.